So who cares? Why not do your own thing and let them say what they want? What's up guys and welcome to a new video. Today we're going to be talking about the dark side of YouTube. I don't feel like filming today at all and I think it's the perfect kind of day to make this kind of video because me not feeling like filming is one of the things on this list and one of the only things that I actually experience as a YouTuber. I got the inspiration to make this video from watching a Natalia Taylor video. I, I love her. I watch her only occasionally because I'm not really into the like girly stuff as much but I do love her content how real it is. I feel like she is one of the few more real YouTubers out there. So I will post her link down in the description, but she actually made a video about the whole dark side of YouTube and stuff. And I wanted to talk about it as well because she said that a lot of YouTubers don't talk about it for fear of being judged as being whiny. And it's kind of true that there is a disconnect between the average person and respect for the job that is being a YouTuber or content creator in whichever field, whether it's Twitch, YouTube, Patreon, etc. I have a list of notes that I put down in my notepad like I do when I have any kind of inkling to make a video and then I just kind of forgot about it. And then a fire was lit under my ass to make this video after the James Charles thing. This isn't really going to be my opinion about the James Charles thing. I'm probably not even going to put him in the tags or maybe I will because why not get some views and stuff but definitely not in the title. But I feel like the cancel culture thing and the negativity surrounding that and how quickly people are inclined to create this mob mentality of hatred toward a public figure who somehow they've dehumanized and made into a non-person because they feel like it's okay to send death threats and docs and stuff like that. It's actually really scary and it's one of the main things on my list here today but that was also a reason why I wanted to make this video and serendipitously I was not feeling like doing anything today. I've been having a weird day. So this might be a long and rambly video because when I don't feel like filming is when I'm the least concise but I do have notes so hopefully that balances it out but I was not feeling like filming and I saw that my favorite makeup YouTube YouTuber had posted something on Instagram, Mikey, link in the description to the video I'm about to talk about, and she was talking about taking some time off. I had just clicked on her most recent video because I was like, huh, I haven't seen an upload from her in a while, and she actually is taking three months off to do something for personal development, and I think that's something you see from a lot of your favorite YouTubers, some sort of burnout and then needing to take time off or not taking time off, and there's a whole host of challenges around taking that time off or not as well. I'm getting all over the place. Some of these things on this list might not be completely unique to being a YouTuber or content creator, but it is things that apply to it. And before we get into it, I am not complaining. I fucking love my life. I think I have the best job in the world to the point where I don't even feel like I have a job even though there is work involved, things that I don't like, like editing, and challenges and things that make me sad that are unique to my YouTube career that wouldn't happen if I had a normal job. But I am not complaining in any way. I think it's a little bit weird that people see YouTube as not a job, like get a real job type of thing. Because most YouTubers spend just as many hours a week thinking things up, preparing for it, spending money on preparing for it, spending time preparing for it, editing, writing scripts in some cases, and I know I personally, along with everything that goes behind the scenes like creating extra content for patrons, answering emails, copious amounts of editing, and a bunch of other things, I spend more time on this than I would a standard 9 to 5 job. Yes, it is a dream job. Yes, it is wonderful. But there are other dream jobs that people view as a real job. Like for instance, traveling around the world being like, I don't know, something that travels around the world. There are a lot of good jobs that people covet and want really badly and that people are jealous of that are still considered real jobs. So I don't really see why this one isn't when you're basically just a self-employed person entertaining people just like an actor or anyone else would, but a little bit more on your own terms. That's not to say that it doesn't have challenges. I think the reason that I circumvent most of these challenges that I'm going to mention is because I do have a very strong support system. I don't know anyone who has a better support system than I have. I have the cutest kitten in the world and I have the best best friend, least drama life partner boyfriend thing ever in Jay. I have a very supportive family who are supportive not only of what I do for money but also know everything about it so there's nothing that I'm hiding. And I'm also very emotionally and mentally stable because I've made myself be that way because I'm very into psychology and betterment. So 
introspection as part of my everyday life. And that's not to say that I haven't had struggles from time to time and things that I had to realize I had to change in order to stay in a healthy mind space and not overwork myself. Anyway, let's get into this list because I'm talking too much. The first thing is burnout. That is one I have experienced to an extent. I personally stray away from being a full-time Twitch streamer because I know that I would personally burn out from that. Sitting on the computer chair for a set amount of time all day, it just kind of fucks with me a little bit to the point where I don't enjoy as much playing video games and hanging out with you guys and my friends as much. So I don't want that to be my full-time eight hour thing. I prefer YouTube because I can do things in parts. And if I want to take some time off, it's not weird because I can get things done ahead of time. Whereas Twitch feels and has always felt to me like very, I cannot take any time off. I have to do this for eight hours a day, this exact thing. And I have to keep that interesting. And I also have to keep in good spirits. And that just doesn't seem like something I would want to do, but I do love doing it as a hobby and as a secondary thing where I don't have a schedule. And that's particularly why I don't have a schedule because I feel like I would burn out on it. As for YouTube videos, I have definitely burned out on editing. And that is basically why around my birthday last year, I got an editor and my best friend when I never, ever, ever thought I would get an editor or ever outsource any of my editing. I was very afraid of losing my own creative voice, but I was burning out on the editing. I felt like I was losing the love for the creation of the videos because by the time I was creating the videos, I had already edited all day and I wasn't feeling the hype about it. Usually I wake up in the morning and I feel the hype. And then after I have to go to the gym, I have to edit and stuff because I have to get something done that day. It just kept catching up to me and I felt like I never had any time off. And now I have a better balance. And I'm glad that I was able to recognize in myself the burnout before it got too bad. And I'm also grateful that I have certain backups in place. I have some money saved. I'm good with my finances. And I also have the different streams of revenue like Twitch and Patreon and stuff. So I can take breaks from things and I can allocate my time smartly. I am a one woman show though. And that can sometimes be a little difficult. Again, not complaining. I fucking love my job so much. You guys don't even know. And I am very, very privileged in my life. Not like in an SJW kind of way, but like I have it really good. I have like no problems. My biggest problems being stress from editing. That's amazing, right? But that doesn't mean that I don't sometimes feel it. And that doesn't mean that I'm not allowed to feel it. And if you ever feel like you're in a privileged position and you're having some kind of stressors, don't ignore them because you're supposed to feel like, oh, they're starving children in Africa. And that's somehow supposed to make me feel better. It just does not work that way. So you end up like running yourself into an emotional mental denial almost because you're like, why am I feeling this way about this thing when I have it so good? Stress is stress. Hardships are hardships. Mental anguish is mental anguish. Self-care is important no matter how high up on the ladder of people being jealous of your life you are. Moving on. The next thing I wrote down is fake friends. I very much do not make friends in the industry for a reason. I think that, I mean, people in general are going to be fake and this isn't only a YouTuber thing or like a content creator thing, but when you have anything that anyone else would covet or want, like status or money or anything like that, or just a good job or connections and stuff, people who come into your life during that time of wealth, you always should be a little skeptical of, but that can also create kind of like a, a very strong cynicism that I don't think is healthy to the point of maybe paranoia. So I just basically don't really make friends with people who are in the industry that much. I have a lot of acquaintances in the industry and I actually love them very much. But like, as far as close friends go, my close knit friends, I actually took from when I started started streaming, my two best friends other than Jay are people who modded my channel and became IRL friends. People who I played video games with online and stuff and people who just have no reason to want that from me, but I'm willing to give whatever clout I have or don't have to them because I actually do care about them as friends. So I know a lot of YouTubers deal with fake friends and people just wanting to be in that group to feel special or to further their own careers. Anytime I acquire a friend or a viewer or anything, and they need any kind of help with their own endeavors, I do try to help them. But at the same time, not allowing anyone to take advantage of me, which I'm really good at. And a lot of people grow up and they're kind of introverted. They don't know their worth, they're insecure. And yet they still have a YouTube channel and it seems like they have everything together. But, and this is gonna be a common theme in this video. There's a lot of people that don't have it together mentally. And I think a job like this where you're kind of isolated in more ways than one can be very harmful on the psyche and put you into like very self-harming, what's the word? See, this is me when I don't wanna film. I'm, I'm very very like non-concise, but I, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> like if you don't know your worth, aren't secure in yourself, don't have a strong network of friends or a family who supports you, you have a fan base that is jealous of you or something and therefore a lot of people are talking shit about you all the time. It can be a lot. And I'm very thankful that I don't have most of those problems. Interjecting here real quick, this is editing Tara and uh, yeah, I just got out of the pool and have no makeup on and it looks ridiculous. So yeah, just ignore that. Anyway, one thing I wanted to add in that I totally forgot to add in was the escalation aspect.
aspect. I think this happens a lot with like prank YouTubers and YouTubers like the Jake Paul, the Jake Paul brothers, the Paul brothers and stuff like that who make their channel based on crazy stuff. You know, like if your whole mantra is crazy stuff, at a point you're gonna have to keep escalating and escalating and escalating and that's where you get to the point where it's like, should I be doing these at like kind of illegal, kind of immoral or at least like generally to the society immoral things to get the views or should I let my channel die? You know, that's like a frustration that a lot of them go through. So while you look at these people and you're like, oh my god, they're so fucking hateable, they're doing things in other countries that are disrespectful and things that are crazy just for clickbait, know that that's because they started Hey baby, you can't see her because she's black, racist. Know that that's because they started a fun channel and just wanted to have fun and now their viewers have said you need to escalate to this point. You need to do something even crazier next time. And I feel this one a slight amount because of Fan Service Friday because this happens with the sexy stuff as well as the shocking stuff or the like social experiment type stuff or the prank type stuff. When I'm doing Fan Service Friday and I'm doing like sexy stuff, changing outfits and things, people go like, okay, we've seen this enough. Now I like that you're switching outfits, but can you show your body? Butthole. Oh my god, this is so cute. We haven't seen enough butthole. And I feel like that's something that really bothers me because yeah, I have the things that I won't cross, the lines that I don't want to cross because it's outside of my comfort zone or because I just don't find fun in doing it. And I think a lot of different types of content creators are asked to escalate a ridiculous amount and that can fuck with your mental health as well. So that's something I didn't add in that I forgot, but yeah, here's Eve being adorable, which is way better. Like, how is she so perfect without makeup, without anything? She wakes up, she doesn't do shit, and she's like the perfect creature. I don't understand, I'm so fucking jealous. Let's like, add a hate comment to her. Eve, you're a skank. You're fixed and a virgin, but you're a skank. Oh my god, what is this? So on the list I have balance colon and then a bunch of things about balance. So the first thing I said is associating home with work. I've never understood this, but I did get a taste of this when I had to stream in bed. Well, I didn't have to stream in bed, but I chose to stream in bed because I thought it would be interesting. When my computer chair broke, I streamed in bed for three days, I think it was, and it was hard for me to sleep because I was spending a lot of my time in bed and then I was coming back to bed to sleep. So I was associating bed with streaming and I would wake up in the middle of the night multiple times and feel like, okay, I need to get to work and stuff. So I've heard that a lot of people have a problem when they don't actually go to work to the point where people who could work from home prefer to work at work so that they can keep the stresses of work separate from home. I prefer to just always be at home. So for me, you know, and you think intuitively, it's like a plus, but never leaving your home plus not having the added interpersonal interactions with people outside of your home at a normal job can feel very isolating and can make the stresses of work stay in the house while you're trying trying to relax and recuperate. I get it. The next item in balance is compromising with viewers while being yourself and making content that you enjoy making. This is one I have a problem with occasionally. I am very fortunate because I just make whatever I feel like making and I know to an extent that's hurt me as like a marketing tool because I should centralize everything into my one niche. I should find one niche that does really well that gets a lot of viewers every time and that would probably be sex ed or talking about sex toys and I don't think that's unique to me. It's not because I'm just a bimbo with nothing else to add. But anyone who does sexy stuff, people are gonna take you less seriously and that's also gonna be your most viewed stuff because everyone wants to see sexy stuff that no one will talk about this taboo from anyone, trust me. If like the biggest, baddest, and least attractive actor like put out some nudes or did some like, oh, let's talk about sex, like an interview, that's gonna be the most viewed thing because people wanna hear about it. Fortunately, I'm not pigeonholed into one thing because I'm making money off of the sexy stuff like on Patreon and stuff enough to do whatever I want and there will be people who like those videos. So while I will have videos that aren't as popular, like my base videos, except for the Danny one, for some reason that did well, and like random makeup videos that I do or philosophy and psychology, things that I really love, I'm able to diversify. Whereas a lot of people feel like they have to balance between satisfying their viewers and getting the views and still remaining themselves and not getting burnt out on one type of content. And I think that's a big one. You see tons of channels, most big channels are specialized into one thing, but do you think that one person is that 2D? No, everyone has a bunch of different interests and sometimes that one thing that made you famous, quote unquote, or gets you a lot of views, gets old after time. And trying to evolve into something different that you still love and still remaining yourself while keeping your viewers happy can be difficult. I find this the hardest with Fan Service Friday because for me, not only is Fan Service Friday something that brings in money, so it's something that I kind of need to do, it's also something that if I do too often or I compromise too much, it becomes not fun for me because there's no intrinsic like, 
okay, I can do sexy stuff while I'm talking about philosophy. It's just sexy stuff. And if I end up doing too many videos that I'm not that interested in, it can cause burnout and it can cause me to decide to be like, ah, fuck what they want. I'm gonna do what I want to make me happy, but there has to be a balance there. And that can be difficult. The next thing is being yourself while not alienating or getting banned. Okay, this one's really big for me. The alienating, again, I don't have to care about too much. Like my niche is kind of me just being myself and saying whatever the fuck I want, you know? If I didn't have that niche, I would have to worry about like not talking about political things, not talking about things that I'm passionate about that might alienate other people, not putting too much opinion in there to the point where someone will be like, oh, she has this opinion, I'm out of here. And then also the big thing I have to deal with on the other side is not getting banned for talking about things that I wanna talk about. I never thought I would have to navigate that. It's weird because on YouTube, it was always kind of like, as long as you're not actually calling for harassment or some kind of violence, which I would never do because I have no inclination to do so, I could just talk about whatever. I could talk about the theories of why or why not to say the N word in society and whether or not we should allow words to control us. Even saying fag on Twitch is no longer okay. My vernacular has always been full of fag and now I can't say it on Twitch and it's so fucking hard not to get banned. I've never been banned on Twitch. It's crazy in seven years and I hope to not start now. But yeah, as things get more and more PC and these companies require you to be more and more PC, I'm gonna have to be navigating not losing my job and my platforms with trying to be myself and say what I wanna say with my own words. And another facet of that is, oh my God, it's so stressful being a content creator on Instagram or YouTube if you have any kind of sensitive content. I get it from like the sexy perspective and the like clickbaity perspective because like a lot of my stuff is stifled in the algorithm. I cringe and also agree with a lot of the content creators that are like bitching constantly in their Instagram stories. Like, please give some interaction to this because the algorithm is fucking me. Like you sound whiny, but I feel the same problems that you're feeling. Like my Instagram since getting it back, not only was it deleted and banned for no fucking reason, but since I've gotten it back, I've lost like thousands and gained barely any. <laughs> because of the algorithm and me being shadow banned, I can never tell, and this is clearly one of the ones that stresses me a little bit, I can never tell what's actually working with my viewers and what people wanna see, because if it's sexy enough or if it has a spicy enough title, then it gets suppressed in the algorithms and like a tenth of my followers even see it. I get comments all the time about how the videos aren't popping up in the notification feed, even though they do have the bell rung on my channel. It's just like, how can I reach the audience that I've built to the fullest potential while also growing with my content that is allowed on the platform, that has been allowed on the platform and allowed to grow for so long. If YouTube and Instagram are stifling my growth and my reach that would be natural and normal for me to have, but oh no, I'm talking about something controversial or I'm being too sexy or whatever. It's, it's annoying and hard to navigate and understand. Next, some people have moral dilemmas on honesty versus responsibility of having a platform. I think that speaks for itself. What I basically mean is, for instance, Roaming Millennial talked recently about how she got under eye fillers, but she was worried about talking about that because she didn't want to push people into going and doing what she did or making it more normalized. I have a different opinion on that. Obviously, you guys know that I don't think that any content creator is ever under obligation to act a certain way to try to manipulate their viewers. I think that's kind of like a condescending thing that you feel like you have this power of viewership for like being an actor or a YouTuber that entertains and now you have to like tell people how to be morally. I don't think that makes any sense. As long as you're not, again, inciting violence, I don't see why you would need to do that. And also I have a different moral compass than a lot of people. I'm not trying to be a role model. I'm just kind of trying to be myself and be real. So it's a little bit different for me, but there is that dilemma as well for some people. Next is sharing openly versus oversharing. Again, trying to be real versus trying to make good curated content that doesn't look like crying in front of a camera, which can be really cringy and come off as very fake or needing of pity. I personally don't like doing this. I don't cry often. I fucking, I feel like I've only cried the time I got kicked out of the house last year. And that's pretty much it. I didn't even really cry when my friend died, but both times I shared that with you because I don't feel like there's a, such a thing as oversharing. And I do feel like it's important to share when you're not feeling too great and stuff. But I also get why people don't film when they're having a bad day like I am today. Now my bad day isn't like a real bad day. It's one of those weird, you're just feeling off 
kind of days. Like I worked out and I'm tired, just like generally tired feeling in my brain. So I know that this video isn't gonna be as perfectly succinct as I would like it to be. And I know I'm not gonna be as high energy as I like to be. And that's not because I wanna like feign always having high energy and being happy, but it's a thing with YouTubers. Like you wanna create fun, entertaining content, not depressing, shitty, subpar content. So days that I don't want to work, it's not because, oh my God, I don't wanna work. It's because it's, my content's not gonna be good. And that's like basically what my job is, is making good, fun, high energy content, you know? So it's not that I don't wanna share that part with you. It's just that I don't wanna make this specific video or depressing videos every time I have a sort of depressing day. And nothing is wrong with me. I'm just feeling off and that happens to everyone. And I think adding in a little bit of self care and understanding that those days are gonna happen, days next to your period, days when you're just feeling off and weird, that's normal, oh my God. And I have fucking an eyelash in my eye. I'm not crying, I swear, you're crying. I don't know what it is about these eyelashes. They look fucking weird, but yeah, I've been having a weird day. I think that hike plus continually eating low calorie and stuff is just making me a little off plus period. So it's not a big deal. So the next thing I wanna talk about is the biggest one for a lot of content creators. The one that I don't really worry about that much, it's weird, but getting over criticism and understanding criticism versus hate. So I think a lot of people, when someone says something bad about their video, not necessarily hateful, but when someone says like, this video sucked or your content is declining or something like that, content creators will often react. They'll react defensively, that's the word I'm looking for, because they've put so much time and effort and heart into the videos and they're not really seeing it from an outside perspective to see what they could do better. But a lot of times some of the hate, even if you have to read into it, some of the hate can be honest, constructive criticism that can make your videos better. And then at the same time, you don't wanna internalize a lot of the people just being mean on the internet to vent their own frustrations, you know? It says a lot about someone who's very vitriolic and mean to you on the internet when they don't even know you as a person. It says a lot more about them than it does about you. And I think a lot of YouTubers are very sensitive, emotive people, unlike me, and they take a lot of that stuff to heart. So they're internalizing a mass amount of hate that a normal person would not see within a day. Like maybe you have an Instagram page with 200 followers, like a normal size Instagram, maybe even a thousand followers. You might get like one hate comment like once every couple weeks and it won't make any sense because the person doesn't know you and there's nothing online espousing that you're the kind of person that they're saying. But with a content creator, you're opening yourself up and giving a part of yourself to strangers on the internet to just tear down. And I can understand and empathize even though I don't feel it as much because it just doesn't affect me. I have a good sense of self, I guess. I don't know, I'm probably just a narcissist in that regard. But I know a lot of people struggle with still loving themselves while not internalizing that criticism that you get hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times a day. It's pretty crazy. It doesn't matter who you are on the internet if you have a lot of followers or you have a lot of people coming through your videos. The scariest is when you have a new influx of viewers and you just get tons of hate comments. I've seen that happen a lot because people will get recommended one of my videos and they're like, this fucking whore, like over and over again. It's like, oh, you must be new here. But for a lot of people that can be pretty disheartening. It's kind of like opening yourself up in a relationship because really the relationship that you have with your viewers is a relationship, at least for me especially. I make a lot of friends through my viewers on YouTube and on Twitch and stuff. I make pretty much all of my friends there these days because I don't even play magic anymore. So you guys mean a lot to me and opening myself up to that, even though it is like faceless people, I can understand why that would be scary. Okay, let's see what else. I said difficulty in explaining your profession slash people telling you it's not a job, etc. I talked about this already, but it's pretty crazy when you put so many hours into something and just because it's non-conventional, people try to like tear you down and you know the reason why they do it. They think that you're getting off easy. They don't know how much work goes into it or they're trying to belittle you because they're sad that they're working a nine to five job or something. It's basically all just a big misunderstanding when people do that. It's a misunderstanding I've never really understood. So I'm misunderstanding the misunderstanding, I guess. But I get that it can be disheartening if your family doesn't support you or doesn't think it's a viable career option. The fact that the career itself is very fragile and is timed. So while you have success, if you do, it could be a very minimal success and then you have to kind of save and be really smart with your money. Otherwise it can just die off at any given point. And it could even be up to the platform, like I mentioned before, that your career dies, not actually you losing any kind of audience retention, which is crazy. Like something can happen to your platform at any time. And that is one of the most stressful things that I've dealt with. I actually go through some bad days where I can't get it out of my head that, you know, something might actually happen to my YouTube channel and I've put so many 
many years into it and no one will really understand the loss that I've suffered. People will just think, oh, that's dumb, get a real job, you know? Which at the end of the day, I am prepared to do and I'm mentally prepared with these backup plans and saving money and all of that stuff. But it is a thing that's semi-unique to owning your own business or being self-employed. And then you also have self-employed tax on top of it, which is a lot. I'm pretty sure I've paid 40% of my earnings every year in taxes. And also when you don't have any formal training for owning your own business, managing your own funds, and then going from no money to a lot of money, which some creators experience, or no money to barely enough money to survive, it's kind of weird to manage yourself in that way, to grow up still doing kind of fun stuff that doesn't feel like a job, but then that also being something you have to take as serious as your job. Hopefully I'm making sense here. I'm trying to explain this to someone who doesn't deal with it because the challenges are kind of unique and they're things that you don't think about that much, you know? Not letting numbers get to your head, that's important as well. Sometimes you lose subscribers, sometimes you gain, sometimes the algorithm fucks you. Sometimes they give you a new influx of people from the recommended page that you don't deserve, like it's one of your worst videos or something. You're basically at the behest of the algorithm and platform gods. And then sometimes you worry about the numbers too much or you let the numbers make you a little too egotistical. I see this in a lot of YouTubers. They base their self-worth on these fucking numbers. And it's almost like a self-defense mechanism because you get so much hate and so many people telling you that you're not really doing a job or you're not working as hard as the next person. So you go like, haha, bitch, this is the thing that makes me better than you guys. And it's like a very unhealthy mindset that I would never want to be in. And thankfully I'm not big enough to really be in that. Like even though the algorithm is fucking me, I'm reminded every day that I do not have 430K subscribers worth of viewership on every single video. And I know the reasons that that is, but it also allows me to not let the numbers get to my head because they are clearly just numbers to a point. Being responsible and running your own business. We've basically already talked about this. Everyone to an extent has to be responsible with their money. It's just that when you have a finite amount of years, you don't know how long and your success is fluctuating every year. It's kind of weird. It's hard to predict where you're going to be and what you can afford at that moment and what you should be saving and if you should be investing in property. Like it's really weird. It's an interesting challenge that I've actually taken head on and I just want to be really good with my money and I'm actually excited about that. I'm excited for the IRS to steal my money and hold me ransom to taxes because I'm paying my fucking quarterly taxes. I'm saving to buy a house, to have some property to invest into, some non-liquid assets and I am ready to do that next year. And it's weird the things that you take pride in when you're an adult, but that's not specific to YouTube. It's just a specifically weird, unstable challenge when you're like a YouTube type person or anyone who's got their own business, but it's a really business, you know? And the last thing I wrote down, and I should end this because it's getting a little bit long, is anonymity and being canceled slash stalked slash harassed. This was the thing that lit a fire under my ass. I do not think it's okay the way that people treated James Charles, the way that people treat pro Jared. I don't know how many people in the last couple of years have been canceled or outed or had some kind of crazy shit brought up from the past that everyone just attacks them on. It is not okay to stalk someone. It's not okay to dox someone. It doesn't matter what you think about that person or how wrong you think they are. It's ridiculous what the court of public opinion can do to you. And again, I've talked about this before in terms of men being accused of sexual harassment or sexual assault. When there's no actual proof, it could be anyone. It could be a game developer. It could be a, an exec in a company. It could be an actor or a YouTuber. It could be anything. You can basically just be canceled by word of mouth and court of public opinion without any proof that you've done anything at all. And the James Charles thing was a really good example of this, people just kind of wanted to hate him and listened to this matronly mother figure of a person who had honestly kind of flimsy reasons to hate on him. If you're not into the situation, it doesn't matter. Basically a beauty YouTuber got canceled and lost a record number of subscribers. I think it was like a, a million in a day or two or something, fucking crazy. Can't even imagine because I don't even have a million, but it's crazy what James must have gone through in his head knowing or at least feeling like he didn't do anything wrong and just being thrown under the bus by people people who have no proof and who want to blow things out of proportion, basically. It doesn't matter if they're right or wrong, allow the actual courts to decide if they've done anything illegal and allow the people who are actually intimate in that situation to decide whether or not to be friends with him anymore. I don't understand why large mobs of people feel like they can attack public figures as if they're not even people. It's a huge problem we have today in society and it's almost like one of those things where people just want to belong to something. It doesn't matter what. Let's belong to the angry mob that's attacking James Charles' whole 
career and his livelihood. Let's be a part of the angry mob that attacks this public figure or this congressman or this whatever the fuck. Find something better that's less detrimental to your mental health and the mental health of others, even if they're celebrities and can handle it totally because they have all that money. Money doesn't bring happiness and fame and money shouldn't take away your personhood. It's really scary to think about if you're some straight-laced content creator, all someone has to do is make an allegation that gains traction and you could even face legal investigation or someone attacking you or leaking your address. That's the scariest part. I had a run-in, a semi-scary run-in with what I thought was a violent stalker and it was a misunderstanding, thankfully. The person was just going something in his personal life and was reacting a little creepy, I guess, because of it. And he cleared it up and it wasn't scary, but I actually filed a police report. And the idea that me just wanting to make fun, crazy, informative videos on the internet and interact with a large group of people and make that my job puts me at a much higher risk of being attacked, murdered, raped in not a fun way, or having one of my family members hurt. That's the scariest one there, definitely. And to say it comes with the territory without any shred of empathy is a little bit ridiculous to me. Like I get that I am consenting to go into a field where that's possible, but that doesn't make it okay. I love you guys. Let me know what you think of this video. If you want me to try more often, make videos when I'm not really feeling it. I don't know, like days where I'm just not feeling it, I have a hard time getting motivated, staying focused, thinking about the thing that I want to think about. I'm not, I don't have a fire lit under my ass to make like a really woo video, you know? So this is me being myself, but it's also me just being like, ugh, all I want to do is hike and hang out with Jay because that's how I feel after a long weekend. I had a two and a half day weekend recently and I just want to do more hanging out with Jay and chilling and being more low energy, but not actually low energy because I want to go do like a three hour hike or something. I'm also transitioning into actually focusing on not binge eating and having issues with my food addiction. So I'm probably lower calorie than I'm used to. And I'm just generally like, eh, you know, everyone has those days. And I'm very happy that I have the mental fortitude to understand that those days are just flukes. There's nothing actually wrong with me. I can rationalize that it's just like a mood and it's normal and I get past it the next day and I'm happy again and I'm like, let's go. But I think YouTubers and content creators and even non YouTubers and non content creators need to remember to take some time for self love, introspection and relaxing. Cause if you don't, if you don't separate just being on a schedule all the time, it can become more stressful than it needs to be. And it can take the love that you have out of that thing that you're doing and putting so much effort in and make it something that turns into hatred and more of a job than it needs to be. Work smart, not hard. And for me, that means trying to get ahead on videos more often, shelling out copious amounts of money to Red to have pre-editing happen from his end so I don't have to sit there and cut out everything. I can just slap on all of the more technical, fun, and, you know, youtube -y stuff. Like the effects, the zoom-ins, the music, the cuts from the music, any graphics I want to put in. That's me. Red is the part of my team that is the monotonous cutting out of the silence and the fuck-ups. Which actually takes like the most amount of time on most videos. It's weird. I love you guys so much. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. And once again, most of these don't even affect me. I'm not trying to complain. But I do think that if you love a content creator out there, if you watch a content creator and you appreciate what they've done and what they've made and the time that they've spent making the content, doesn't matter what kind of content, than it is, send them a little thank you for being you because even though they may not be the most impoverished people in the world, they do still have stresses. And I think they're neurotic perfectionists most of the time that work way too hard and don't take enough time off and maybe aren't as mentally sound and loving of themselves as they should be. I think it's a general theme that a lot of YouTubers just don't understand self-worth and won't speak out for themselves and won't take the time off for self-care that they need. And I think that's very important for everyone. And I think a lot of people People in general just don't have the self-respect to go like, you know what, I need a weekend. Or you know what, I need some time alone. Or you know what, I need to do this thing for me and spend this money frivolously on something I enjoy for once so that I can recharge. So if you haven't done that in a while, I encourage you to do that as well. And let's not be afraid to talk about things that stress us, even if we're in a position of power or a position of privilege. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. Bye. Sorry, it's not the best video and my eyelash is killing me. Oh. And I wanted to find a dark side of the moon shirt because it would be so apropos to have a dark side of YouTube, dark side of the moon shirt. I have literally five of them and they're all like in the dirty clothes or something. I can't, I don't understand why doing laundry is a pain in the ass. Bye.
By the way, for those of you who are wondering, my shirt says, Don't call me princess. It's a Princess Leia feminist shirt. I just like Princess Leia, so I got it. You can call me whatever the fuck you want. In the comment section. I can take it. Leave the other YouTubers alone for once. Allow them to recuperate their mental health and you can attack me. I am here to make you feel better after your shitty day of work. If that's your kink. Call me the dirty slut that I am.